so that you not put yourself under undue pressure. Under undue pressure. Some of you now, you know that there are people you cannot call. You just want to go and have a nice time to go to a restaurant. You know that people you can't call. You just you know, if I'm talking, you know, the, you, you have a name in your head. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We're not saying just a special celebration. We're just saying a friend because let's just go out. Your friend that actually called you that took you out was using his or her head. But you, as you are ordering, you are ordering take away. Hey. Hey. Oh, Jesus. Verse 7. For you yourself know how it is necessary to imitate our example, for we were not disorderly. So, in this place, the, the, the main point is we were not idle. The next thing is that always be around people that never want to be idle. <coughs> Hallelujah. People that are not willing to stay idle at all. They must be productive. They want to do something. Hallelujah. They want to do something. Matthew 20, verse 1. Matthew 20, verse 1. The Lord who began it, he will accomplish it. The Lord who began it, he will accomplish it. For the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of an estate who went out in the morning along with the dawn of a to hire a workman for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Well, just because of time to save you, you know the story. And, you know, he called, 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 called. And verse 8 says, So when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, No, 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 hold on. Verse 6, please. About, and about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing idle, and said to them, "Why have you been standing here idle all day?" They said to him, "Because no one hired us." He said to them, "You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right, you will receive." So when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, "Call the laborers, give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. You know, and the parable say, "You remember what was I reading from? They went out very early." These people that are people that are willing to work. They are willing to do something. Early in the morning, they are up already seeking for something to do, to be productive. But it happened that there, there was nobody to hire them and they were idle for the meantime. You see, when you avail yourself, when you are ready to work, you see things, there are things to do. And, 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 the, and the owner of the vineyard be, and came and said, what are you doing? Why are you idle? He said, ah, because we have nobody. To and he, he took them in also. Remember verse 8, and he, he said, when he called, he, he called, he called, and when even he came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, called the workman, he said, pay them even from the last. Now, this is the funny part of it now. When he said pay them from the last, he didn't reduce the, the, the pay. Hallelujah. He didn't reduce the pay. Of course, if you read to the end, you understand that Jesus was speaking about the kingdom. Hallelujah. He was speaking about the kingdom he, he, even when, when you were ready when you woke up, wake up at any time, you will still make it. He said, say, and the first shall be the last, and the last shall be the first. When you start, you can still make it. It's not by how long you've been. So he said, say, these ones, they started late, but they still made it. Why? Because they were willing to work. He said, pay them their wages, and they pay them. But this is the thing now. Of course, in the parable, those that were early, they began to murmur, why would you pay the same thing? Hallelujah. And of course, he said, do I owe you anything? We agreed and I paid you. 
So you don't decide, uh, decide for me what I should do with my money. Hallelujah. It's what I want I do. Hallelujah. Don't you know say that's why you must work? To get money. Hallelujah. Because when you have your money, you do what you want. Hallelujah. You see, this is what I want. I want to pay everybody. This is what I want. I just want to take everyone out. Hallelujah. This is my choice. If you begin to use, ah, this person, this person doesn't like you. It's my choice. I just want to take the person out. It doesn't matter who likes me or who doesn't like me. And you forget that even the Bible made it very clear. Once you are getting those things and even helping the person or even feed it, by feeding the person even, you are even heaping more cool on the person, on the so-called enemy or the person that dislikes you. Hallelujah. Did I give the third point? That's why we read that place. He gets up early and ready for work. Get up early and be ready for work. The fourth point, you are known for what you do. Acts 18.2. You should be known for something. Acts 18.2. Pris- Priscilla and Aquila, they just came back. And when the apostle came there, there he met a Jew named Aquila, native of Pontus. He recently arrived from Italy with Priscilla, his wife. Due to the fact that Claudius had issued an edict that all the Jews were to leave Rome. And Paul went to see them. And because he was of the same occupation, he stayed with them. And they worked together. For they were tent makers by trade. Hallelujah. You should be known for something. Remember he came, he came he's already into ministry. He even came for evangelism. He came for min, uh, ministry work. And now he needs to stay with these people. And when they came, he found out that they were of the same trade. What trade can you be associated with? What can you do? You know, even sometimes in, in, in job interviews, ask you, what can you do? Hallelujah. Can you use the computer? What can you do? They are, they are known for something. That's why Apostle Paul was bold enough to, te- to, to, to tell them where we read from already in Thessalonica. He told them in Thessalonica, from where we read in Thessalonica, that he was telling them that, you know how I worked with my own hand. You see, you don't need to give excuses. That's why God at the time when you say a man of God is working and uh, he's not supposed to just be doing the work of the ministry. That's one, you see, there's some people that will be in the ministry, are doing only the work of the ministry, you are not doing anything to help yourself. You will die. And some people that are saying, dude, why not focus on the work of the ministry? You have not sown one seed. I don't mean the seed you show to, you show to church, to the life of the man of God, no. You see, there is something Apostle Paul did during his days in ministry that made him remarkable and, and he made him stood out. You know, because he's learning, you know, he's a lawyer. You know, he's very learned and, and it makes him think far, far, far. Whatever he's doing, he, he does it even more. He observes and he improves. He began to say one time, his ministry has been booming, and he began to say that even him that is least among the apostles. And he even began to say that he, in tongues, he speaks in tongues more than he all. Hallelujah. The man was so vast that he came to a time when he was about to, to he came before the king, and he was, wants to plead his cause, and he was defending himself. Of course, the Holy Ghost being with him, but he didn't hire a lawyer. He was defending himself. One time he looked at them, he saw that this sector were the uh, Sadducees. These ones were the Pharisees. So he saw that one side believed in the resurrection of death. One side believed in the angelic ministry. 
And the other side does not. He looked and he, he collided their head. He said, men and brethren, it's because of um, the resurrection of Christ and being persecuted. And I said, ah, is that the reason why? And they began to fight each other. You see, may God give you the wisdom that your enemies will never be able to again say. That when you open your mouth, they will go into confusion. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, all these things, that's why I say, some things that you call distraction are actually not distraction. Why was the apostle not distracted walking? Hallelujah. That's why you, you need to learn something. And now some of you, when they tell you to learn something, you have to call your mom or your dad. And you know that sometimes when you call them, you will learn that thing again. My daughter, it's distraction. It's, it, it's distraction. It will distract you. Let your dad come back. Let your dad come back. Let your dad come back. I was, and instead of how to not even help and calm your dad down, no. Your daughter started a game. Your daughter started a game. They will now call you to a conference call. We sent you for school. We sent you to study. We sent you to leave all those things. But it's only when people don't tell their parents. How is that time? The guy is already shaking you, already telling them. It will have helped you to either say yes or no easily. But no, you won't mention. You mention, mommy, there's this guy that's still shaking me today. You know, you get the next available flight back home. You know, there are some parents, for example, now this fasting now. Tell them of this fasting. Ah! And after, you know, the last time you fasted, ah, there is this ulcer in the family. Ulcer, ulcer, ulcer. That's how you just get discouraged. You see, there are some things. You know, parents do trying to shift their children away from being hurt, but actually they are really harming them. And you will be there, your mother will go for retreat three days. Same person that says you shouldn't fast, too. they will go for three days retreat. So from morning to evening, they are not eating. When they have break, they will not go and eat. But when you say you want to fast, you say don't fast. And this way, the, this, the way they were trained then, that made them very strong. That's why if, if parents would do well, in putting in some level of training they had when they were growing up, to some of the children now, it will really be good. It will really be good. So many people now don't even know what it means to really engage. That's why we, some of the things we're saying here are deliberate. Are, some of them are deliberate so that you will know this is what you ought to do. Like in marriage, some of you, you grew up when you were 10, 12 already, you, you saw that mommy and daddy are okay. The only history is when you see their old picture. You look at the picture, you look at them, and you know something different. And some of them will not show you all this. Even they, have, they won't show you where they lived before. They won't show you how they started. But you're seeing the now. And you now, you want to start in the now. Uh, let me explain better. You want to start in their own now. So you grew up, you saw that daddy already built a house. Daddy has two cars. Then you now, you want to start in the now with a man that already has house and has car. I'm not saying there's anything wrong. If that kind of man comes away, fine. But it shouldn't be the number one list. 
For example, the first thing you ask is that, do you have a house? Do you have cars? No. But this is somebody that just got a job two months ago in oil company. What you don't know is that you should give him two, three years. No, I'm not saying this. It's common sense. Because the thing you are looking for actually in two, three years will come. Instead of to ask the relevant question, where do you work? What do you do? Mm-mm. So where, where do you stay? Can we make a video call? Oh my God, it's so nice. You don't know if it's the friend's place he, he, he had to stay. You should be concerned about where he's working. What does he do? So the house is not there, but this oil company job, my God, give this guy two, three years, it'll be times two of what my dad has built. Well, that is, I'm just saying, he's working, he's still part of the work. In the now, mommy is doing well. When mommy is going to the salon, mommy goes with you. Mommy fools the bill. As a lady growing up, this is called, you should be applying some caution. Because it's not in all situations you start in the level of the now that your parents are in. Sometimes you have to, you know, calm down and apply some level of momentum before you climb again. Such is life. Hallelujah. And one thing you should never do, this is measuring yourself with some other person. You know, it's very common in Africa. Africa. And people don't help matter. We don't want to speak to you. Uh, you know, this person's uh, child. Uh, what's his name again? Uh, Hannah, okay. Uh, I know. They will answer the example, put you under pressure. Pressure. Somebody is progressing. Oh, I thank God. God, I'm happy for you. But this year, everybody is progressing together in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Whatever your heart desire is, surely you fulfill it in the name of Jesus Christ. What you should do is always stay focused. This year, be focused. Don't always be distracted. Be focused. Don't be here tomorrow and you are there next tomorrow. Be focused. So this proverb, this proverb, you know that if you want, if you are a toad, you know toad. If you're a toad eater, eat the one that is very big. So the way they call you a toad eater, you you answer. Hallelujah. You know you are doing this, what I do. When they call you, you answer. So for example, say, uh, are you an agent? I shouldn't be thinking. Uh, agent, agent, agent. Some of you don't even know. Are you a fashion designer? Are you a baker? Do you bake? You don't even know. Mm, today, I used to sew. Mm, tomorrow, I used to bake. Which one do you do, Seth? Stay focused. Do say stay focused? Don't be distracted. Six. Develop a productivity mentality. That's is Second Thessalonians three verse ten. Always desire to be productive. Always desire to be productive. For while we were yet with you, we gave you this rule and charge: if anyone will not work. Neither let him eat. Always want to do something. Always desire to be productive. If you know will not work, let the person not work. You see, that's why growing up, that's what I'm saying, there are some things that were not verbally spoken of while growing up that your mother intentionally was putting in you that you do not know. Why would you call, call you to, at age five, to pound crayfish? That is for those that are in the house where they, they were still paced to a mother. But I'm speaking uh, to Africans. So if you like form, if you like have, you know what I'm talking about. 
Because some of you would do and say, hey, what is what is spam? What is spam? <laughs> until I until I follow you to your house in Nigeria now, I'll go and bring three mortars from uh, in the kitchen store. Africans, we are we may God deliver us. Let's try the ones abroad. May God deliver the Africans abroad. They can form for Africa. Chai. You mentioned you mention pounding. Someone don't even know what pounding. And they put, you pound the crayfish a little, and they put pepper. You pound as so you're pounding the pepper, just enter your heart. Mom will say sorry, and you're cleaning, and you're pounding. He's teaching you something. Gradually, you learn how to cook. That's why, check the people, most people that don't know really how to cook, the ones that keep watching television when mommy is in the kitchen. I not really like this one, but I just have to communicate him. And when I'm cooking, it's not my thing. It's not my thing. It depends on the house you're coming from. If cooking is not your thing, then eating shouldn't be your thing. <laughs> if anyone will not work, neither let him work. <laughs> you give them little assignment, little tasks to do. You know, I just when you're growing up, there's you you want to watch this program and and mommy is calling you, it's already time, go and wash the plates. <laughs> Deep down within you, you are boiling. <clears throat> See, all you want is that let mommy don't call. You pray some stupid prayer. <laughs> I think you pray that mommy should have delay, she don't come back early. And there's mommy. Sometimes you don't hear any sound until mommy is already on the door. And that's when you know that you have speed. <laughs> and what you don't know, sometimes parents will just look at you and laugh. You already wash the plate. And so you, you think mommy doesn't know that you just came and started washing the plate. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anybody that will not work, at least that your friend that likes eating. From today, say, go and put that, take this pot, put water. I'm coming, I'll put the rice, but go and put the water on, on, the, on, on the gas cooker. The person who put it will say, okay, take this quantity of rice, go and put it. When it boils to this extent, I'll will, I will come and show you how they wash it, how you parboil it. The person will begin to learn. Not every time you are pampering the person. Oh, hey, come and eat. It's ready. Come and eat. It's ready. And when you, when you finally get married, your, your your child is misbehaving. You are beating the child. I wasn't like you when you were like. <laughs> Eleven. Indeed, we hear that some among you are disorderly that they are passing their lives in idleness, neglectful of neglectful of duty, being busy with other people's affairs instead of their own and doing no work. Well. Some other day we'll go into, into all this. Let, let's, uh, for, for this place, let's stop for now. We'll go back to John 5, 17. John, John 5, 17. But Jesus answered them, My father walked even until now. He has never ceased walking. He's still walking. And I too must be at divine work. Hallelujah. Don't so say I must be at divine work. I must walk. The seventh point is stay walking. 
still working. Of course, it's not so you already know that um, if you're going to the gym for consecutively for three months and you stop for two months, the other month you go again and you, stop, you know, well, if you are going just for um, exercise, it's a different thing, or to maintain weight is a different thing. But I'm talking of people that go for weight loss. You know, you have to be consistent. And your trainer is giving you what to do. You finish on me, you are going on cycling. You finish, you do this, you do that. And so, some ladies that go for, for, so that their hip will be prominent. <laughs> Sometimes, they'll be riding, as they're riding the bicycle, they want, they are riding, they're looking, whether it's shooting out already. And they will do, they will go, they give them the, they will be doing. As they do, after they, they will run go to the mirror. They want to. It doesn't come out so fast like that. It takes time. Just to enable, stay walking. Once you stay walking, then you see the results. My prayer for us is that whatever we find doing this year, may grace keep us doing it in the name of Jesus Christ. May we never be slack in doing in the name of Jesus Christ. The same way even the apostle made reference that he abode with Priscilla and Aquila and they were of the same trade and they were working together. May you be known for something in the name of Jesus Christ. This year, starting from this month even, May the grace you need abound in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Even as the fast even begins tomorrow, may grace abound in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh Lord my God. <laughs>